امريكا وتربيت في كاليفورنيا واسلمت في 1977 77 اي 77 كان عمرك كم في الوقت؟ 18 18 يعني مثلا لما انا اكتشفت الاسلام في كاليفورنيا انا تركت الجامعه مباشره لاني انا احسست انه ماذا عندهم الان؟ انا تركت الجامعه واسرتي في انذاك ظنوا اني كانني ماذا فعل؟ وهاجرت الى العرم العربي وبدات اتعلم العربيه وكان لي شغف كبير في هذا الشيء. سنتكلم مع المسؤول هناك ويشرح لنا التاريخ وعندنا كذلك ريفرند ريتشارد كوك وهو من جيران المسجد لهم كنيسه بجنب المسجد فان شاء الله يشاركنا في الحوار وعندنا كذلك مره اخرى الدكتور عبد الحكيم مراد من جامعه كامبريدج فان شاء الله سيكون حوار حديث ثري ان شاء الله باذن الله وسنمشي ونزور المسجد ندخل المسجد ان شاء الله. There are Christian churches all over the place. There's one just across the road there. And uh, many Christians are fearful of how to understand Muslims. And so we've worked hard to try to get Christians and Muslims to meet each other almost on any pretext. So a meal, a meeting, a discussion, uh, visits to the mosque. Because it's the first uh, purpose-built mosque in Britain, many Christian people want to come and see here, and uh, we've had sometimes, you know, 100, 200 people come to see the mosque and uh, have Islam explained by some of the brothers or sisters here. Great. And so, what, year? what year was it built? It was built in 1889, um, and it was first. All the way until 1889. Yeah, wow. yeah. First purpose-built mosque in this country. And there were one or two mosques in seaports, but they were mostly house mosques in Liverpool or Cardiff, apparently. Was, was that a result of the tolerance acts that you were telling us about last night? Well, before the early Victorian period, it would have been impossible to build a mosque in England. Right. Uh, even the nonconformists uh, often experienced severe difficulties, and yes. the Catholics... Catholics course, couldn't yeah. open churches in some places yeah. until about right. the 1830s, yeah. isn't it? So the act of toleration made yeah. it theoretically possible to have a a place of Muslim worship, and before then, Muslims were, to were persecuted here. In the 17th century, there are three cases of Muslims being put to death in Britain for not uh, converting to Christianity, so two, in, two in Wales and one in England. Queen Elizabeth I had a treaty with the Turkish uh, Sultan um, because, so it was the Protestants and the Muslims yeah. against Catholic Europe. Right. Um, so it was very interesting, the relationship yeah. between uh, this country and uh, the Muslim heartlands. And, and the Moroccans actually, in uh, Mansour of Dahabi, who was the Moroccan Sultan, had also a treaty with Queen Elizabeth. And he, in, uh, in 1602, he actually sent an emissary and, and wanted to make an alliance he sent an emissary and wanted to make an alliance with uh, Queen Elizabeth to actually take over America from the Spanish so that the, the Muslims and the, uh, the uh, English could rule together. And he died in 1603, so uh, nothing work, came right. of it. Right. <laughs> what, is, uh, like, what is the relationship right now between Muslims and Christians here? Well, I mean, we have lots of churches, none of them as, in a sense, as large a community as the community here. Uh, and we've tried to get uh, Christians and Muslims to be friends, to understand each other. So from our side as a Christian community, we try to uh, run courses that explain Islam and why the community is like it is, so that the fear and the ignorance, which then leads to 
uh, intolerance and aggression uh, can be overcome. But I mean, we've only started, but it's a beginning. Can we take a look uh, at the mosque? Oh, well, sure, yeah, yeah. Good friends here at the mosque and the leadership. What, what's always extraordinary to me uh, is that when I, because I, I left Christianity and became a Muslim like uh, Dr. Abdul Hakim, um, I never felt that I was abandoning Jesus. No, sure. You know, I really didn't. I did not feel I was giving up what was essential to me about the Christian faith. I felt, in a sense, I was enhancing, really, my Christianity by accepting another dispensation. I mean, I really saw it, and, and in a sense, I've, I've, I've really looked at myself and in terms of my family, because I was raised in an Orthodox uh, tradition, um, I've, I've, I've looked at myself as really not abandoning anything that my parents, for instance, taught me uh, of those essential truths. Yeah. Um, but I, in a sense, adopted a Unitarian branch of yeah. Christianity, yeah. which Islam is simply an extension of that, because I think the Muslims have always seen Jesus. We love him. We all love him. Sure. Yeah, that, that's the tragedy of the myth of the clash of civilizations, that the two stories can't overlap. But the reality is that the great stories of the Bible are also there in the Quran. Yes, the God yeah. of, of Moses yeah, is the God, God of, Abraham, of, of, the, Jacob, yeah. of, of the Quran. There are no two religions that are more closely interlocking. Oh. Uh, it was wonderful opportunities for building understanding, but the mutual misunderstanding and ignorance it seems has never been greater. I mean, that's how I feel. I really yeah. feel... Um, that, that we in the West, uh, we have just an immense amount to learn from the Islamic tradition because it succeeded in doing certain things very early on that Christianity literally took almost 2,000 years to get to. Yeah. I mean, the fact that this, this mosque was built in 1889 and that there were Muslims in the 17th century being killed for their faith and Catholics persecuted in the 19th century mm. for their faith. And yet, in the Muslim world, we have Christians visiting the mosque in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. Yeah. When, when the Christians um, came sure. and, and actually came into the mosque, and in one narration, they actually he allowed them to pray yeah. uh, in the mosque. And then we know also that Omar ibn al-Khattab, when he went to the, the church uh, in Jerusalem, um, and refused to pray in it. They, the Christians actually offered, because he, he conquered the city, mm -hmm. they offered him to pray in the mosque, and he said, I don't want to pray, and they asked him why wasn't it permitted, and he said, no. But if I pray, I would fear that Muslims later would say, Omar prayed here, let's make it a mosque, yeah. and they would uh, break the trust yeah. of protecting the church. And, and I, you know, stories like this, which... Traditionally, Muslims were literally, they were nurtured on these stories.